right, so today is the day before Thanksgiving. Come on, say hi. Ugh. There you go, you say hi. So I was nervous about going out because the day before Thanksgiving, I knew it would be a madhouse at the grocery store, but I worked yesterday and we still needed ingredients for the turkey. And I'm making my special oatmeal cookies that I always make every year. It's like kind of a tradition that my family started when I was young and it was passed down from my great grandma. So this recipe is super old. And I make these oatmeal cookies with butterscotch, what my mom taught me to do. They're delicious. They are not at all healthy, but they are so good. So I make them every Thanksgiving. So I still needed the butterscotch morsels because I couldn't find them anywhere. Luckily I could find them today, which was great. But yeah, the grocery store was a freaking madhouse. <laughs> they had like uh, security people directing the traffic and like where to park because people were just like basically running each other over. So that was fun, but I am so glad I found everything that we needed. And I also wanted to show you guys, I've shown this before on my channel a while ago, but these are the energy drinks that have been my favorite. These are the only energy drinks that I've been able to find that have good ingredients, especially for pregnancy because actually most energy drinks are not safe for pregnancy because they add a whole bunch of like different chemicals, taurine, vitamin Bs, all these things that aren't good for you and that have way too much caffeine. So these cans, there's different flavors. This one's a mango one and a berry acai. I like the lime pear ones, but they didn't have them this time. But yeah, the brand is called Oka. OCA and basically it's just caffeine, a little bit of sugar and some flavoring and that's it. It's 120 milligrams per can. And as you guys noticed, I did not drink my coffee this morning because I wasn't feeling it. I'm, I'm most mornings I want coffee, but this morning just happened to be one of those mornings and I still have these mornings, unfortunately, that I just don't feel like coffee, but I still want caffeine. So it's already noon, I haven't had any caffeine yet. I'm gonna save this for like my pre-workout energy later this afternoon, so I'll do a workout. Yeah, so I wanna make this video just like vlog style. I do wanna make a video on my symptoms and what I was feeling post frozen embryo transfer. That'll be probably next week's video. But I really just wanted to do a vlog just to kind of catch you guys up on how I've been feeling. Today I'm 23 weeks and three days. Feeling good. I'll get more into that later. Yeah, so I wanted to make this vlog style video kind of catching you guys up on how I've been feeling, but also what I've been doing to keep my pregnancy healthy because there's been a few things that have really worked for me to keep my body healthy and keep my body in shape. Of course, you know, I'm slower these days. My workouts don't look the same as they used to, but I am still able to work out very consistently, go on my walk. So I'll kind of get more into that later on in the video, but you saw what I ate this morning. That's pretty much been my go-to breakfast, bagels and bananas because they're easy on my stomach. They fill me up and um, I don't have any more like nausea really during the day. It's I still have a tiny bit at night, but it's mainly just not really having a great appetite at night for just for dinner stuff, unfortunately. When I was in my first trimester and I was nauseous in the morning, bagels helped a lot and bananas too. So now I just kind of combine the two and make a a nice breakfast. So um, yeah, I'll try to show you guys throughout the day what I eat and yeah, we'll just hang out and I'll show you guys what I've been doing to help keep my pregnancy healthy and keep me energetic and I don't know, feeling good because I am growing. So I will show you guys kind of like a bump date body update too. Yeah, welcome to the video. If you guys are brand new here, welcome. I upload one to two videos a week all about living healthy. And as you guys know, it's been IVF, a lot of IVF videos just because I know you guys are interested in that stuff because a lot of you guys are going through IVF or have been through IVF or about to go through IVF. So that's kind of been my life also the past year. I'm so glad it's sunny today. So if that means that this guy needs another walk, we did a three and a half mile walk this morning on my days off, which is most days a week. I only work two days a week now. So on my days off, I do walk Yuma every morning and we do at least three and a half miles, which takes about an hour. But walking during pregnancy is really good. I've heard there's a lot of good benefits, especially as you get into like more the half second half of the second trimester and more into the third trimester as you get bigger. Walking, doing a lot of walking really helps the body, really helps keep you in shape. It's good cardio. We do do three and a half miles every morning because Yuma needs it and I love it too. So that's how we started off the day today. And we do need to do another activity with him. Normally I do another like mile and a half walk at noon. So enough talking. Mom needs a snack real quick. I just realized that I need a snack before we go on our walk because I'm always snacking. Oh gosh, 
Uh, I'm finding out that I can't eat a lot of like big meals, so I'm ending up snacking throughout the day more than just eating like three big meals. So it's gonna be a snack. I'm just gonna eat half of this right now. I really like these perfect bars, not for you, because the ingredients are really good and they have a lot of like whole food powders. So kale, flaxseed, rose hip, orange, lemon. So a bunch of like really healthy stuff in here. It is not vegan. It does have whole dried egg powder in it and it does have some dairy, but it's all organic, which is really nice. They're higher calories. So the whole thing is 340 calories. So I just end up eating half at a time. Don't move the camera. I'm just gonna eat half of this now. We're gonna go on our walk and I'm, oh, this camera's tilting. There we go. I'm a little behind on water. So as you guys know by now, I drink a gallon of water a day and I have these timestamps. So it's noon and I'm only at barely the 11 o'clock mark. So I'm gonna kind of chug this too real quick. Then we'll go on a walk and yeah, we'll go from there. <laughs> Waiting patiently. I know, just wait for me real quick. All right, we obviously made it back from our walk and this is gonna be lunch for me. I've just been loving my fruit bowls and then just been topping a whole bunch of healthy stuff on top. I've just been loving fruit since getting pregnant. It is so refreshing and it's so appetizing to me. Plus it's full of fiber and it's something that I've been missing because I just still can't stand vegetables. Although now that I'm 23 weeks, I noticed this last week at 22 weeks that I'm able to eat a little bit more like broccoli and just a little bit though. Green beans. Uh, yeah, it's still not appetizing, but I'm noticing that I'm able to eat like a normal portion size at dinner at least. But during the day, I just, I don't want anything green. I don't even want my green juice, just nothing green. I don't know why, it just doesn't sound good. I get nauseous at the thought of it, but fruit, let me tell you, there is nothing like fresh fruit. And because fruit doesn't have any protein in it, I always wanna like add protein to it. So I, of course, me measured it out as you guys saw, but I wanted um, a full serving of hemp seeds on top because hemp seed is a complete protein. So a serving is about 30 grams and that's I think around 10 or 12 grams of protein, which is pretty good. Pumpkin seeds are really high in protein also and they're really high in magnesium. And I think that's one thing that a lot of like pregnant people complain about is leg cramps and cramping and just cramping in general. So if you can get enough magnesium in your diet, then I think that really helps with cramping. And then just to kind of spice it up, put some honey on top and it is delicious. Of course, I love anything citrus, like I said. So um, the other thing that I've been loving are my blueberries still, which is great because they're really high in antioxidants, which help keep a healthy pregnancy going, which is fantastic. But yeah, I'm still kind of at the point where I'm just eating whatever sounds good and I'm trying to make it healthy. I still want all the carbs. I want pancakes. I want donuts for a meal. I don't want any meat. I don't want anything salty. I just want sweets all the time. And I know that's not healthy. So I'm really trying to make like things that sound good to me healthy. I think this was a couple videos ago when I did my last vlog on my first trimester. I was eating a lot of those low carb pancakes. They really wanted pancakes and I was craving pancakes, but I knew I was eating way too many carbs. So I was eating those low carb pancakes and I still do. And I add protein powder to the pancake mix, which also helps boost the protein. But I really have been loving my fruit bowls. And this is really a fertility bowl because even though it's not a smooth, even though it's not a smoothie bowl. It's got all the fertility friendly foods on top of it. And as you guys know, who've been following me on Instagram, know about my fertility bowls and my fertility like recipes that I make up that are full of fertility friendly foods and things that help boost fertility. So second trimester, hands down, was way easier than first trimester. I hear that the third trimester is pretty much just as difficult as the first trimester, but in different ways, because you're just larger. But first trimester for me, it was a lot of nausea um, at night, not so much in the morning. I and mean, during the day, I was okay with nausea, but at night, it just really kind of hit me. I would still be nauseous throughout the day here and there. And so what really helped me right off the bat, first thing in the morning when I wake up is I would have a bagel. I would wake up at six in the morning and on my work days at five in the morning. And about half an hour after I'd wake up and make sure I'd have something in my stomach that would really help the morning nausea. And I couldn't, I couldn't drink coffee because coffee, the thought of coffee in my first trimester just made me want to vomit. I'm not dealing with really any frank nausea anymore, but still food aversions 
like greens, unfortunately, and coffee occasionally. The other thing that helped me first trimester was snacking throughout the day. So hard candies, always kept hard candies on me that really helped the nausea, just sucking on something all day and then keeping crackers with me too. So lots of snacks, lots of like high carb snacks. I don't really like that many carbs, but when you're pregnant, you have to, you're in survival mode. So you do what you have to do to make yourself feel okay and function throughout the day. So lots and lots of snacks, hard candies, bagel first thing in the morning or something that's bread related or I guess even potatoes I'm hearing helps, but really anything carb heavy in the morning will help absorb that extra HCG hormone that floats around your body that's responsible for the nausea in the morning. It helps absorb so the, anything bread, like toast, bagels, potatoes I'm hearing. Even if, oh, this is weird, but I, I also hear that like refried beans or beans in the morning helps absorb that extra hormone, HCG hormone that's floating throughout the body that is responsible for nausea. So that's my, those are my like greatest tips for dealing with the first trimester because nausea is like the big symptom that everybody deals with. Now that I'm in my second trimester, not nauseous anymore, but definitely not, just not feeling certain foods unfortunately. I have a lot more energy second trimester and I didn't really feel more energized until I probably hit 18 or 19 weeks. I started to notice a difference that okay I have a little more energy and I was getting used to the whole out of breath thing because ugh, honest to god I thought there was something wrong with me. When I hit eight weeks I was already out of breath just from like when I was doing my body weight workouts very simple like easy going workouts I would just do like two body weight squats just just air squats and I would be out of breath. I'm like what is wrong with me like no one warned me that even by eight weeks your blood volume almost doubles already so if you're out of breath and you don't know why and you're pregnant that's why it's just because you're pregnant and your blood volume is doubling already so now that I'm 23 weeks I'm used to the whole out of breath thing and now I can kind of just anticipate it like walking upstairs walking around I'm just gonna be more out of breath than usual so that the new symptoms that I'm noticing now <laughs> are uh, at the end of a 10 hour work day. So my, my nursing shifts are 10 hours and I'm on my feet most for most of that. I've been feeling this like pelvic pressure now and I'll give you guys a bump date in a minute. I, I know that I'm getting bigger. I'm probably 14 pounds heavier than my baseline weight. So I'm pretty much on track for a normal pregnancy weight gain because I wasn't underweight or overweight um, to begin with. So, but I have been noticing like not, it's not pain, it's just pressure, like pelvic pressure and kind of like some achiness in my vagina area, which I think is pelvic pressure. So just noticing that at the end of a work day, but I don't really notice that too much if I'm at home because I'm not as much on my feet at home. So I am gonna start incorporating like pelvic exercises, Kegel exercises to try to like strengthen my pelvic floor. But in terms of working out, which I will work out in a little bit, I am not doing anything high impact, no jumping, nothing, no, no running, nothing that's high impact because I wanna protect my pelvic floor. And I'll obviously no abs, like no crunches or anything like that because my belly's expanding and I wanna protect my abs also. And because I'm heavier now, my feet hurt more often. So I'm like, dude, I am not even that big yet and I'm already feeling some achiness. So I know I'm gonna be hurting a lot come third trimester and come the last few weeks. So kind of bracing myself for it, but I'm trying to stay active and anything that I can do to like strengthen my pelvic floor and kind of keep my workouts going, of course modified. I can really keep my muscles and hopefully that will help the third trimester and hopefully help labor too. <laughs>
training. So guys, do you? Oh, I'm dead. This workout, I did probably a few months before getting pregnant. I flew through it. Obviously, I'm not flying. Nobody's flying these days. The trainer you heard in the background, her name is Yuska Light. I have been doing her workouts since 2012, so 10 years plus. I love her so much. She is the reason why I was able to keep in shape after nursing school, after I quit gymnastics. Her workouts are so dynamic. She's got yoga, she's got Pilates, she has, she prides herself in home workouts, so body weight workouts pretty much, but then sometimes she'll incorporate like dumbbells, kettlebells, she has kettlebell workouts. She has, she has hundreds of workouts on her website. So if you're interested in doing some of her workouts, she has beginner workouts all the way to advanced and she has different programs you can follow and it's only 10 dollars a month and like I said over 10 years I've been doing her workouts pretty consistently and if I do my own workouts a lot of her stuff I use so I just love her a lot she is my kind of my savior when it comes to fitness so and it's rare that I find a trainer online person that I love because I'm very picky and I know a lot of stuff by now so she's great I'll put her Instagram and website here if you guys want to check her out because she's amazing she doesn't have any prenatal exercises or programs yet I'm really hoping she does at some point she's never been pregnant so maybe she won't but I don't know so I just modify a lot of her stuff or I just do what feels good so I know the lighting is not the best in my room so I apologize for that but hopefully you can kind of still see a little bump date I feel like I've officially popped so like I said I'm 23 weeks and I noticed way more of a bump last week but I'm so excited about this because as you guys know it's been it's been just really mentally challenging going through the first half of this pregnancy because of everything I had to go through up till this point over 10 years of infertility and then IVF and I was having a hard time believing this pregnancy but now that I'm literally popping I'm like okay he's there and I'm feeling him every day and baby boy is very active you guys very active even the other night I was having a hard time falling asleep because I kept feeling like pokes little pokes in my belly and I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> this is just the start of it. Feeling good. And we'll just kind of take this one day at a time in terms of my size and me just getting bigger. These have been staring at me for the past week. And they are my baby shower invitations, which I wanted to address today. It's only five, so I'm gonna try to address a few of these now, but this whole baby shower, baby registry thing has been stressing me out. I know I shared it on my Instagram story, like how stressed out I've been with trying to get together this baby registry and what do I need and texting my sister and having her send me links of stuff that has helped her. I think I'm a little bit better in terms of my stress level now that I have a baby registry and I have stuff on it and my best friend is throwing me my baby shower but she sent these to me they're all the invitations are all here um she just needs me to address them so I've been working on getting everybody's address and I'm gonna work on doing those tonight I'm hoping I can even finish them or at least finish the ones that I have the addresses that people have sent me baby shower is January 7th so my best friend who threw me my gender reveal party is also throwing me a baby shower so so nice of her and I'm so grateful to have her because otherwise I don't know that I would even have a baby shower honestly my whole family is in California so it's kind of like I don't have very many like of my people up here I have some friends up here but my best friends are all in California and my best friend now <laughs> lives here which is great but she's like my only good friend here so yeah I'm so thankful for her so these hopefully my goal is to get these sent out by Friday today's Wednesday so if I can get most of them addressed tonight that will take a huge load off my shoulders all right let me show you what we're gonna have for dinner tonight Probably some of you have seen this at the grocery store. We just get this at Fred Meyer, but I've seen them at Vons or Safeway. They're um, really high in protein. They're very tasty. And I like them because they have really minimal ingredients. Low carb, which is good because you guys know that I am way too high on my carbs. So I'll have pasta with this, but I'm, it's really nice that these frozen meals don't really have many carbs at all in them. And this whole thing is 25 grams of protein, 260 calories, which is low in calories, which is good. So it doesn't like fill me up too much because I cannot eat like big meals anymore. There's not enough room in my stomach anymore because of this baby. So I'm just snacking so much that these are perfect. So Josh and I will have one each and then we'll have pasta. And Josh has been cooking all the meals because I've just been not feeling it at night since getting pregnant. 
which is really disappointing because you know how I love to cook and I love having my glass of wine while I cook and I can't have wine right now. So it was just kind of like a bummer at night for me at this point, but you know, that's okay, it's temporary. But he's been making this because it's got protein in it. So a serving is 10 grams of protein. It's not, I mean, I'd rather have this organic as you guys know, because really your wheat should be organic, but because he's the one kind of doing the shopping and the cooking, I'm just kind of going with, with whatever he wants to eat, I'll eat too, because you know, it's just, it is what it is these days. So I really do like how these taste, and it does have five grams of fiber per serving. So the fiber, fiber is pretty high on this also. So we'll have this and this, and whatever vegetable Josh wants to cook, I'll, whoops, I'll try to eat because, I don't know, veggies are just ugh. Peas and carrots are still my go-to. I can stomach those. And the other night I had some green beans, so eat any one of those options. I'll eat maybe a little bit of broccoli, maybe. Yeah, and that'll be it for the night. It is Josh's birthday today, and so it, he's got a, kind of a bummer birthday. It always falls either the day before Thanksgiving or on Thanksgiving or the day after Thanksgiving, so his birthday is oftentimes kind of overlooked, and this is also a prime example. We didn't celebrate his birthday today. We'll celebrate it next week, and a lot of his coworkers are gonna throw him some sort of like little luncheon party thing next week. So we were gonna go out tonight, but I'm tired, he's tired. He's still at the dog park with Yuma, so he we're, he's gonna just make the dinner tonight. It'll be easy. And I have to make oatmeal cookies tonight, so I'm gonna do that for tomorrow's Thanksgiving, and then Josh has to start doing all the stuff for the turkey tonight. So we have a lot to do for Thanksgiving, and so yeah, that's why his birthday always gets overlooked, but that's okay. We're just gonna take it easy tonight and start our Thanksgiving stuff. And, but I did wanna show you what we're gonna have to eat tonight, and like I said, I'm not too picky on food as long as I can get food in me and it feels good in my body. I know I'm normally gluten-free, dairy-free, pre-pregnancy. I'm like all about the, you know, organic, which I still am, but I just have to kind of pick and choose my battles at this point and just make sure that I'm getting enough protein. That's kind of my goal is getting enough protein in every day. Try to shoot for like 100 grams, 110 grams-ish of protein a day. It's kind of hard sometimes and all I want is carbs. So I'm gonna end the video here. I am sorry, it's kind of a shorter video, but I did wanna just kind of update you guys on everything going on with pregnancy, what I've been doing to keep myself feeling good and fit. Just really getting my steps in with the walks really helps and then trying to move my body with some sort of a workout is my goal every day that I am off of work. I don't work out on my work days because my, my work days are too long and I'm exhausted by the end of a 10 hour shift. But on my days off, I try to fit in a 15, 20 minute, max 30 minute. I can't really go past 30 minutes on a workout because I'm, I'm exhausted. But getting my 10,000 steps in a day, getting a workout in just really helps helps me feel good. And maybe I'll do a future video on, cause I wanna um, kind of perfect what I'm doing in terms of Kegel exercises and exercises to strengthen pelvic floor. So I don't have a whole lot of information about that yet, but once I kind of get more information and once I do it more, I'll let you guys know so that maybe you can try it if you're pregnant. And then just drinking a lot of water and just eating as healthy as I can. To, you know, I just have to make sure that I can stomach what healthy food I can. Trying to eat healthy, trying to eat as many like whole foods as I can. You know, I'm still snacking on candy and sugar and I'm just trying not to, but also keeping a realistic perspective in mind. I know that baby boy is healthy. All the stuff that I ate pre-pregnancy is not for waste either. I know that it's built up in my system, so that's been helping baby also. And the next big thing in this pregnancy is on Monday, so this coming Monday, I have my fetal echocardiogram, so I'm very excited about that to see my baby's heart and all the blood flow through the chambers. And I think I explained this in my 20 week ultrasound video. I'll link that down below if you haven't seen that yet. But with IVF babies, there tend to be a little bit higher risk for congenital heart defects. And when I say a little bit higher risk, I mean really minimal. It's like a 1% higher risk than like a normal baby. And so it is recommended that if you have an IVF pregnancy that the baby gets a fetal echocardiogram around week 24. And so of course your OB would will guide you in that and, and let you know if you need that for your pregnancy, but it's definitely needed for mine. So that's on Monday. So I think it's about a 40 minute test. So we'll see how that goes. I will also mention that in the next video. So I will see you in the next video, which will be all about how I felt after my frozen embryo transfer, like what kind of symptoms that I had right after the embryo transfer, especially in that like 10 day waiting period for my pregnancy test. So that video is gonna be after this one. And I'll also mention like what happened with the fetal echo. I'm hoping I take some videos 
and if not I'm hoping pictures and if not then maybe they'll send me some videos and pictures I can also like present to you guys all right I'm rambling at this point so I'm gonna let you guys go thank you so much for watching I hope this video helped you guys out those of you going through your own pregnancy those of you going through IVF I'm really really praying that you get your IVF baby also and the miracle that you have been waiting for for so long like me like I always say in every video now never give up on your IVF journey never give up on having your own kids you just never know what's gonna happen in your future give this video a thumbs up if you liked it because it does really help support my channel happy holidays and always remember to be kind to yourself